Hi, it's Vicky here with another art journal page. This is a project that I did when I was guest designing for Simon Says Stamp about a week ago. So I'm just posting it on my own channel in case you haven't seen it. Today I'm working on my Dilutions Art Journal and I'm going to apply directly on the pages acrylic paint. The acrylic paint that I'm using is Distress Paint by Tim Holtz and I am applying everything with a baby wipe. I have started with my lighter color which is Wild Honey and then I'm going on the edges only and uh, applying a little bit of uh, Rusty Hinge. Now I am uh, doing the blending directly on the page with the baby wipe and just because the baby wipe is a little bit wet, the blending is really smooth. I am going to finish off uh, the background with uh, some uh, vintage photo only at the edges. By the way, I haven't prepared the pages by applying gesso. I am working with my distress paints directly on the page. That's because I am working on my Dilutions art journal and the pages are nice and take uh, medium beautifully. Now, depending on the art journal that you are working on, you might want to use gesso before you apply acrylic paint. To make my background more interesting, I will be using this Impression Obsession stamp and this is a big stamp and it's called uh, Passport Stamps. I am going to apply some archival ink and stamp directly on the pages. I will not get a perfect impression just because I am working on a bulky art journal. But just because this is going to be my background, I really don't care if I have a perfect impression. And I am going to continue stamping until I have covered both my pages. Now that I am happy with my background, I am going to create a frame. I always like to have a darker frame around my layout and to do so today I am using uh, Distress Ink. I am applying Vintage Photo with my blending tool and I am also going to apply just a little bit of black suit only at the very edge of uh, both the pages and this is going to make all the edges more defined. And now let's have fun with masking. I am going to create a frame around my layout using this mask and uh, I am going to apply black suit distress paint with a sponge. And if you do that instead of directly applying it with a dabber, then you have better control of uh, how much paint you apply through the stencil. I am also going to do it directly as you can see here, but uh, if you go ahead with this technique you need to make sure that you don't squeeze the bottle at all, otherwise you will get too much paint uh, which will go underneath the stencil and you will not have a good impression. I am going to repeat this uh, technique around the edges which is going to leave me at the end with a nice frame made out of words. Also, just to remind you that you can find the full list of all the supplies that I'm using today in the description area as well as on the blog. I am using my heat can just to speed up the drying process and I am going over my stamping only at the center with my lighter color just to mute it down. Today I have used my silhouette digital cutter and I have cut out all those uh, little monuments from different places as well as this globe. This globe is actually a Hero Arts digital file, but if you don't have a digital cutter, then you can just print out uh, from the internet a globe and cut it out with your scissors. Or if uh, you have, you can use a scrapbooking paper with a globe design. So I'm just cutting out a piece of uh, white cardstock, which is going to serve as the um, background of this globe. So I am going to color everything blue. I am starting with my lighter color and that's Peacock Feathers which is going to make it nice and vibrant but just because I am going with a vintage look for my page I am going to darken things up. So this is where I am going to blend two more colors by Distress Paint so that's a Mermaid Lagoon and Salty Ocean. I am blending everything directly on uh, my design by using a baby wipe. I am also going to dab all around the sea just to make it uh, more uh, distressed looking. I'm making sure that everything is nice and dry and now I am going to add some texture just to make it uh, more imperfect. So I am using one of those stamp textures by Tim Holtz and I'm going to stamp with archival ink. I'm not going for a perfect impression, I just want to add some texture there. Also, just to make it look more distressed and vintage looking, I am going lightly over the, the whole area with vintage photo. 
So this is now muted down. So you can see how you can start with something bright and uh, colorful and uh, turn it into something vintage looking. So again, I have started out with um, a light green and now I'm making it darker. I started with mode loan, darken it up with some forest moss and now I'm just applying a little bit of um, vintage photo with my blending tool around the edges just to make them pop even more and uh, what is going to make this look even more dimensional is adding a little bit of black soot on the edges. So now my globe looks uh, even more uh, distressed and uh, vintage looking. And again, just like I did with the C, I am going to add some texture with the same stamp. This time I'm using green archival ink. And I'm just stamping all over to add the texture. To stick the two pieces of my globe together, I am using some gel medium, which I am applying at the back with my brush. My brush is totally dry, so I'm not transferring any water to my pieces. I'm going to stick them down and just put a couple of acrylic blocks there until they are nice and dry. And while the globe is drying, I am going to go ahead and color black all the monuments. Now I could have uh, used my acrylic paints with a brush or a, bra or a marker like I'm doing now, or you can always uh, cut them out directly of uh, black paper. So I'm just going to cover up the back of the globe with gel medium and I'm staying away from the edges just because I want to tuck uh, behind those monuments. I'm going to place it on one of the pages. Coming off from the sides, I always like to stick my focal points uh, slightly off the side just because I think that uh, it makes uh, the layout more interesting. And now I will go ahead and start uh, sticking uh, each of those uh, famous landscapes around the globe. To stick everything down, I am using again gel medium. I am trying to be very neat with gel medium, staying away from the areas where I have applied distress ink because uh, gel medium is going to make distress ink to run. I am applying gel medium with a dry brush. I haven't uh, dipped my brush in water or anything. So this is going to make it even easier for me to keep everything uh, nice and neat without having any ink smudging. I am going to stick all those monuments in a row around the globe and I think that uh, this is such a beautiful scene. It's uh, one of my favorite uh, layouts for sure. And uh, I just had to use the Parthenon since I am Greek. So once everything is down, I am going to use my scissors and cut out the excess paper. Making everything nice and neat. And to keep the continuity of the design, I am going to use my blending tool and apply some black soot around the edges to get rid of that white edge. So now it's time to add my quote. And uh, today I'm using this quote. I am in love with cities I've never been to and people I have never met. So I have a print out with my printer uh, some uh, parts of this quote, so I am cutting them out with my scissors now and I'm going to stick them directly on my page and there are only two words that I haven't printed out and those words are uh, cities and uh, people which I am going to stamp with uh, this uh, font this is an alphabet stamp by Tim Holtz and uh, I always like to have uh, some uh, words bigger than others in my quote, just those words that uh, mean uh, the most on uh, this quote. So I am uh, having cities and people bigger now. I am stamping uh, letter by letter just because uh, this is quite bulky and I wouldn't have a good impression otherwise. And just to make it even more vibrant, I am going all over with my black marker. Now I'm using gel medium at the back of those uh, strips and sticking them down. And my quote is uh, nicely placed there. And just to make sure that those uh, paper strips are not going to peel off at some point, I am going over them with some gel medium as well. 
So now my uh, layout is uh, mainly finished. All that's left to do is to do the finishing touches with my white gel pen. To do so, I am adding a white line only on one side of the monuments. And you can see how this technique really makes them look more three-dimensional and helps them pop more out of the background. I have zoomed in for you so you can see exactly what I am doing. Just a white, a white line only on one side of all the monuments. And I am going to do the exact same technique on the letters, as well as add some white touches on the globe. And that was the art journal for today. I hope you had fun and got inspired. And if you did, don't forget to leave me a comment as well as give me thumbs up on my YouTube channel. Here are some close-up photos of my art journal layout today. And if you need more inspiration, here are two more art journal layouts that I did a while back. Thank you all for watching!